Call of Duty 2 Big Red 1 is a World War II first-person shooter that follows the exploits of the Big Red 1, which is the nickname of the U.S. 1st Infantry Division. So basically what it is is you're following that unit around as it uh, fought in World War II in chronological order. So you'll start in North Africa, in Morocco and, and Algeria, fighting against uh, Rommel and the Desert Fox, and also against the Vichy French, which is uh, something you probably haven't seen in a game before. But all that basically means is uh, you get to pick up French weapons and, and shoot them, which is something kind of new. And then after that, um, you go on to Sicily and do a marine landing there and move on up through Italy. And then after that, uh, you get sent to do a Normandy landing, which you've done many times before. And then you sweep through Europe and finally into Germany, um, where you cross the Siegfried Line and, and finish up the war. One thing that stood out to me in a good way about the game uh, is the way the campaign uh, gave you a lot of very different mission types. For example, in one of the missions, you climb into the belly of a B-24 Liberator bomber, and you actually man uh, the belly gun and, and the nose gun, and you have to shoot down incoming fighters. Um, it's, it's kind of something that was borrowed from Call of Duty United Offensive, but it's still pretty fun to do, and the way the, the fighter planes come apart when you shoot them is, is really satisfying to look at. Uh, there are also missions where you have to jump into anti-aircraft guns and shoot down German bombers. You'll be driving tanks, and um, you know at the end of the game, you'll be going into Germany uh, in January '45, fighting house to house in the snow, and, and it gets pretty intense there. Um, so that's something that that stood out to me in a good way. One of the things that I thought was really strange in, in a not so good way uh, compared to other Call of Duty games is that. The infantry combat in this game just doesn't feel all that intense. It's kind of like a, more like a shooting gallery, uh, for most of the game at least. The, the weapon feel just isn't that great unless you're using mounted weapons or like a tank cannon. And uh, overall, that part of the game let me down. I wouldn't say Call of Duty 2 Big Red 1 is that great of a value. For one thing, uh, the single player campaign doesn't really last that long. If you played a lot of shooters before, you can probably blow through the 13 missions in you know, six, seven, or eight hours. And uh, after you're done with that, on the PlayStation 2 and Xbox versions, there is multiplayer online, but it's not that great. You just have your standard deathmatch, team deathmatch, CTF modes, and a lot of the maps that are available for multiplayer are just based off the single player game, so it's stuff you've seen before. Um, and it's limited to 16 players. If you have the GameCube version of the game, you don't even get that, and there's no split-screen multiplayer at all on any of the versions. Call of Duty 2 Big Red 1, in a nutshell, is, is your standard World War II first-person shooter. It does some things really nicely, like the varied campaign um, and taking you through a lot of different settings, but uh, it's, it's really short, and the multiplayer isn't that great. I'd really only recommend it to people who are super hardcore World War II fans or, and you know, like playing these types of games um, because if, if you've played any World War II shooters lately, you've pretty much seen most of what there is to offer in Call of Duty 2 Big Red 1. Um, it's still fun, still, still cool to play, but since you can blow through it so quickly, you know, it might only be worth a rental.